Ever since I created the Image of the Beast page on my website, wherein I show how the 501c3 contract of the American government drafted by Lyndon Johnson back in 1954 was a prophesied fulfillment wherein every church that signs onto it becomes a duplicate or image of the Roman Catholic Church and State, you know, the Vatican. Because we all know the only legal way to have a 501c3 in America is to incorporate or join your church or ministry, for that matter, with the state. Well, ever since I've been saying that, all the preachers and pastors with the 501c3 have said I was crazy for making such a claim. For decades, they have said I was wrong because the 501c3 contract only grants them tax-free status wherein they have no political voice whatsoever. But March 7th, 2006 came along wherein President George W. Bush signed it into law that all churches with the 501c3 contract are now legally considered government agents of the state with the ability to lobby law. Well, again, the scoffers on the pulpit said no. It's still not a prophesy fulfillment of the image because they feared the IRS so much they weren't going to speak politically because the IRS wouldn't allow it, even though the president drafted the bill in a way that says they could. And then as Donald Trump was campaigning and promising to repeal the Johnson Amendment, you know, the 501c3 in his campaign speeches, the same pastors under the 501c3 again said, no, that's still not a prophetic fulfillment because, you know, Trump's just making campaign promises like any other politician just to gain office. He's not going to do anything. And even if he does gain office, the IRS still chains the pulpit down tight. Well, May 4th, 2017 came along wherein now President Donald Trump officially removed the IRS power over the churches, where they can legally stand on pulpits speaking politically to not only influence elections, but offer their voice in lobbying any law that they agreed with. Again, the scoffing pastors claim that the image of the beast prophecy cannot be the 501c3 because the divided Senate now is never going to be able to reach the amount of votes they need to make sure a sweeping change such as this would go forward where they could actually repeal portions of the Johnson Amendment, giving the churches the power to emulate the church and state power of the Vatican as the prophecy says they will. Well, with all that said, and mind you, at every single turn, we see how the blind pastors under the 501c3 contract have been completely wrong at each and every signpost along the path of the long prophesied 501c3 contract. Notice what just happened this morning. They now have all the votes they need to go forward on this. And what's in this tax plan that's so prophetically important? Well, there's a few more articles. And by the way, every time I do these blog entries, all the links that I'm talking about, all these articles are in the blog entry of the video. So when you read those articles and you see how the Johnson Amendment is part of the mix, think about this. All the churches ignored the prophesied implications of all this. Once this is set in stone, and it's going to be set in stone as Christian prophecy never fails, the churches with the most power are going to be able to endorse the candidate of their choice above the smaller churches, which means the exact same thing when it comes to lobbying the long prophesied Sunday law. And thanks to the ecumenical charge of Rome, wherein every church is now in bed with the Pope, and yes, this also includes the SDA church from the leadership right down to the pastors on the GC payroll. With all that said, what do you think is going to happen in the coming days? Well, perhaps a statement or two from Rome itself will shed some light on this since most people, and this includes all these scoffing pastors, they seem to prefer to believe mankind over the Creator who penned the prophecies in the first place. And so with that said, check this out. Thank you for watching. God bless.